<laughs> Guess what? Evelyn here. We're going to be doing some hors d'oeuvres. Holidays are coming up and I thought I would just run through a few. They're not hard to do. I don't think anything much that I do is that hard other than candy because it's got to come to a certain boil temp and softball, hardball, and never quite get that right. But be that as it may, today we're going to do some hors d'oeuvres. I wanted to show you this. Isn't it big and hunky? <laughs> do you realize I don't throw things away? This is from the 60s. There was a time when that color was all the rage. Anyway, you don't cook in this. I just wanted to show it off. Okay, first of all, we are going to make a dip with blackberry jelly. I couldn't get the jelly, so I have the preserves. Red, crushed red pepper flakes and softened cream cheese. Now you're gonna find this super easy. Half a jar. Come on, you. My grandson even called me. Well, actually texted me. Grandma, do you have that recipe for? <laughs> I said, uh, yeah. I don't know how much of a recipe it is, but. I'm going to say somewhere between that and less because the whole point of this is to have this sweet on the cream cheese with this biting you back. It's kind of good. Uh, I'm, I'm a little chicken. Maybe that's enough. Now this is when you want to make the night ahead, the day ahead. Two things. You can serve it with the cream cheese mixed into it, or you can serve the cream cheese with this over the cream cheese. And then you have your very nice little servers. It's nice to have nice party stuff. Okay. There we go. So easy. Now, let's do some Okay. I told him, you know, I really need to bring my kitchen here. All right. So there. Now we have to pretend this is overnight. And be somewhat generous with this. Okay. And then this is going to go in here to be all mixed up. This is where you get your muscles. It's a pretty color, too. Nice and purpley. Okay, now wasn't that tricky. There you go. There's one. So I'm gonna put these guys back. It probably would be nice. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, you're right there. Just serve some crackers with it. Jelly and cream cheese keeps in the refrigerator for a very long time. I'm not sure. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry. But check on uh, Google if you can freeze cream cheese. I'm not sure. 
So I'm not going to advise you to do it. And yes, I washed my hands just before we started. Twice. Okay, Kim, come and try. <laughs> we have a, we have a guest, Kim, oh. and she is going to be my taster. I am. Yes. So I'm going to push this out of your way and have you try it. Oh, Either way. Okay. I'm gonna try the mixed up one. Okay, this is very spooky. In here. <laughs> this is, what did you say, blackberry? Yep. Okay. Can you use other flavors too? This is the one that I have always used. Okay. Uh, strawberries too sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, raspberries too sweet. So yes, I guess mm. I'm kind of saying blackberries, the one to, 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 to try with this. There you go. But there's no reason why you can't it's your house. The only reason why you can't try whatever you want to try. Every recipe is follow the recipe the first time, second time do what you want with it. Well, mm. it you. is pretty good. It is really good. Did you get a hot pepper flake yet? Not, I don't, uh, not yet. <laughs> Hold on. You'll, you'll know when you get it. <laughs> I know. I, I love that. I love that about it. Um, I see what you mean, because it's not too sweet. Because if it was too sweet, it would be... It, was, it would be wrong. Right. It would be wrong. It, it just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just be, wouldn't work. not eat as much either. <laughs> well, there's that. We have no trouble clearing this off of the table mm -hmm. at the holiday time. It's a very easy thing to make. Mm -hmm. You may have more. <laughs> These will go over there now, and you may ta taste. Mm -hmm. There will be others to taste. Okay. Let me move that for you. One down. Now, that was the dip. Now, have you ever had olive tamponade? <laughs> My granddaughters called these salt bowls for obvious reasons. I forgot my measuring cup. It's a cup. Maybe titch over, but it's close. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you learn to fly by the seat of your pants in your kitchen, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So, we need olives, obviously. Garlic. Oh, yeah, I was going to talk to you about garlic. I chopped this up yesterday and put olive oil in it. And believe me, you can smell it. I have been watching on TV cooking shows. It's something I enjoy doing. And they always say, don't buy the jarred garlic. Well, i got to try it. Find out why I shouldn't try it. Buy it. Oh, I was so disappointed. They were right. It has enough flavor. I was, it was a lot of a lot of waste. It was a waste of money and a waste of garlic. So here, if you know you're going to be doing garlic, you might as well cut up several, put them in some olive oil. Anything in olive oil is going to keep forever in ten days. So here we have our garlic, olives. Oh yes, capers. These are flower buds from the caper tree, bush, not sure. They are very briny. But it adds and offset the brine. Don't ask me why. Chemically, for some reason, it offsets the olives. So we have drained olives, one and one fourth cup. So we're going to get some more of them. in my, I love this thing, I love this thing. My sister-in-law had to talk me into buying it, but I'm awfully glad she did. Okay. I'm guessing <laughs> olive tapenade should have olive, so that's one and a fourth cup. Now, one tablespoon of drained capers. Come on, you guys. 
Come on. Okay. Kind of a little heapy, but I did put extra olives in there. Now, let's see if I can do this. Aha! Got a couple capers left in there. And we are one clove of garlic. There should be two cloves of garlic in there. That's what I chopped up. Actually, it was three. So I'm going to guess that is a clove of garlic, about the right size. And here you are. Oh, I need paper calling. A little messy this morning. We have then one tablespoon of lemon juice. Let me tell you about lemons. You can freeze these guys. And they're perfectly good after thawed for lemon juice. You can't use the rinds. Freezing does something to them, but they are just fine. Sorry, I'm trying to make the juice come out. Okay. All of that for teaspoon <laughs> okay but it does add a brightness lemon juice always adds a brightness Woo -woo. there we go Well, now we're going to and as that's making noise and grinding everything up, I'm going to be adding olive oil to it, you'll see, until it comes to a paste kind of thing. You'll, you'll know. But if you can see how it sets up. Did you see here? It sounded different and it's getting thicker down here. You can see where the olive oil is working down here. It's acting different. It's acting, it's coming together inside. Okay. Smells like olives. Who knew? Okay. Uh, oh, you're gonna go in. I think this one. So a nice serving dish. Oh yeah, be careful. I'll get this in, in front of the camera in a second so you can see. I have never known anyone oh dear, to turn down olive tamponade. While I clean up, would you like to taste? They gave me a microphone. That was probably a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay. I've never held one of these before. I'm kidding. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Yes, because it is. It's good. <gasps> what do you like to use your tapenade on? What do you like to put it on? Crackers. Just crackers. Toast. Mm -hmm. I like it in toast points mm -hmm. because it's um, fancy. Well, not so much it's fancy. This is very soft very flavorful, but it, the toast has a little texture to it. Mm -hmm. So the texture with 
the tamponade, I think, goes together rather well. This is so good. It's really yummy. Mm -hmm. It is yummy. It is good. I and like as you them. saw, it really wasn't hard to do. Mm -mm. If you don't, not using this blender thingy, I've got olive oil in the back of it. Uh, a food processor will do just fine. You might get a little <laughs> lonely in there, but the food processor is just fine. Can you use other olives? Oh gosh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I love I love black olives. I love black olive tamponade. And I haven't tried it, but I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't love Kalamata, the mm. purple olives. That's got to add a little less salty taste because the Kalamatas are, are it's a different, uh, different uh, olive. But try whichever ones that you think you like. Thank you for bringing that up. You know what I think that would be really good with? Hmm. Goat cheese. I don't see any reason why not. You could put that on your plate, on your serving dish. I'm sorry, I have all this stuff in the way. Uh, with your serving dish, with this in the middle, and then cheese, your goat cheese, mm -hmm. and your crackers, maybe a little nicer crackers than these, but these were handy. <laughs> and you'll have a lovely uh, spread. Yes, you will. Do you want me to move this for you? Not yet. Okay. <gasps> oh, she's bringing in the party. So here, this guy can go now, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we have part of our party. That wasn't hard. Didn't take long. I made a little mess, but that doesn't mean you have to do that. Okay. Now, we are going to wrap up the lemons. You know lemons are good to keep your avocado from turning black. Um, when you make your uh, guacamole, I always add lemon into my guacamole. I really like lemon in there, a little bit of onion. Um, and that's about it for me. I know some people put tomato in. If that's your choice, go right ahead. But guacamole with the, I won't say fritos, but that, I'm not sure that's the right word, but you know, what you, you know what you eat with guacamole. That's a good hors d'oeuvre to put out. It's easy. Okay, we have now, can do ham roll-ups. Close that up. And maybe take some of this stuff off of here so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, uh, you can add salt and pepper to either one of these if you choose. I don't. This has got enough salt in it. Pepper might be okay in the jelly one because you're looking for that heat. You're hoping for that heat. So a little bit of pepper won't hurt. Don't get carried away with anything. Yeah, try it a little bit. Try a little bit on your cracker. See what you think of it. Scallions. Preferably mostly dry because something we're going to be doing is we are going to wipe this off. Ham, packaged ham. Room temp. Yeah, come here. There is a method to my madness here. Things, ham has to be dry. You need to dry it, 
because you want the cream cheese to stick to it and it won't if it's wet, which is why I had dried my onions as well. Okay. Here we get to struggle opening the cream cheese again. There's always just a little opening. And if you get it, if you catch it, all's well with your world. Okay, offset spatula. I have this size, and I have a larger one. The larger one I use for frosting cakes, cupcakes, things like that. This one I use for so many things in the kitchen. As we've gone through these classes, shows. I've talked about tools to have in your kitchen that will help you accomplish some of these things. This is a very good tool. Okay. All right. You can get down here. Now, gently This is where you're going to tear it if you go too fast. You have to be careful. You don't want to tear it. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. All right. And it's called a ham roll up for a reason. <laughs> now, how long do I need my onion? Only that long. Okay. Yeah. Did you see what I did? I brought that up with the. Okay. Oh, this guy's trying to be tricky. We'll fix him. There you are. Cream cheese acts like glue. There you are. Let's do another one. Just because we can. Again. We want to dry it so that the cream cheese will stick to it. You see I'm being a little bit more careful, not going as fast as I normally go. I think sometimes I have one speed and it's go! train myself to slow down. And don't be, be some generous. Yeah. Okay, another onion. How long is this guy? Oh, we get some green in this one. All right, again, if you're watching, so you don't tear it, Lift up the paper. See how well that worked? A little too much green. So again. I suppose if you wanted to, you could put toothpicks in those things. Small tongs would be, I like, I like small tongs for these kind of things. Now, my <laughs> friend, okay. 
I brought bowls, but I'm not sure who was supposed to be for what. One of the things that my friend did, because that takes a little bit of time, she took some cream cheese. She took several pieces of ham. Careful. And just finely chop the onion. Looking at how much cream cheese I have in there to how much onion I want to put in. All right. Now it's a spread. This keeps in the refrigerator. You can make it a day, two, over ahead. And you have all the wonderfulness of the ham roll-up now in a spread. Okay, my taster lady. Come and see what you think of these. You've been lurking on the outside waiting for you to finish. <laughs> oh my gosh. So now you have a choice. I love those. Ham roll-ups. Those are so good. Yes, I want this one. It's been calling me. Can okay. I now? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're good. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. try the mix. It's going to be taste just the same. Okay. You have to put it on there. Just the same. Oh, God, it's a lot of ham. Yeah, well, I should have put more cream cheese in it. And I, I have, have my, hand, my hands are full, so I'm not really doing yeah. that well. Okay. I'm trying the dip. You know what this would be really neat for? <laughs> Not just for hors d'oeuvres, but like if you were doing a Sunday brunch. Oh, gosh, yes. And the, yep, for, oh, for bagels. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, yes, great on bagels. Mm -hmm. Of course, anything with cream cheese is great on bagels. Mm. Yes. <gasps> like? Yes. That would be good on bagels, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm talking with my mouth full. <gasps> You're <laughs> forgiven. <laughs> Did okay, I think we have one more. Mm. We did, whoops, wrong recipe card. We have a cheese dip. I'm going to step out of the way while you... Okay, oh while I play. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, when we started, guess what? I thought it was going to be a garden program. <laughs> Somehow that hasn't worked out that way. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just... Somewhat of a little surprise to me. We keep coming up with new things to, to do in here. Okay, this is, I am going to try to do a half a recipe. This is one cup of cream cheese, one cup of chopped olives, one cup of ricotta, a clove of garlic, and then you pulse till smooth. So we're gonna go halfies. So here's our cream cheese, which would be four ounces. Why am I doing this? Because 90% of the stuff is coming home with me, and I'm going to eat it. And as much as I love it, I shouldn't be eating it forever. Okay, one cup of chopped olives. There's my handy dandy cup. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm looking for something to drain the juice off into. Well, we'll do it this way. Is this how your kitchen works? <laughs> That's not quite a half a cup. 
What is getting there? All right, now I think we have half a cup. Half a cup. Whoops. One clove of garlic. Remember the garlic that I had done earlier? So now I did it once and I have garlic for both. So we're just going to put not the olive oil but the garlic into it. Garlic, not only is it good for you, it's very good for you. It tastes good, too. Okay. And ricotta. Again, it sh I'm, I'm doing halves, but it should be a cup of... Where's the magic spot? It's called no patience. <laughs> I'm stepping on my wires, people. I want to rinse this off. Using our handy dandy cup measuring. That's a pretty good half cup. Gonna make noise again. Now we're going to pulse this so it's smooth. So everybody's gotten to know everybody very well. That looks good. So now we have another serving dish. Slippery. Yeah, we really need to know if we can freeze cream cheese. I think you can, because I think I have frozen packages of cream cheese because if so and please check if so you can make this all of these things ahead of time and the day of your party or thanksgiving or christmas or whatever party get together you're all set another pretty little server now for my taster lady, Kim. <laughs> Here I go. We have one more thing for you to try. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. I there love ricotta cheese. Okay. Oh, I don't need lunch today. No, perfect. you don't. Mmm. <laughs> uh -uh. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Interesting mm -hmm. flavor. It's Not fluffy. Oh, um, it, yeah, yeah. It's nice and fluffy. Uh, again, I would. Because it's so fluffy, I would serve it with Triscuits mm -hmm. so that you have the fluff and the crunch. True. You think of, uh, 
how it's going to taste in your mouth. I mean, you need the opposites. It really goes over good. Mm -hmm. Well, I have made a complete mess today, but it was fun. Uh, all of these things are easy to do, and I hope you try them. Thank you for being my taster. Thank you for asking that. me. That was fun. <laughs> and someday, maybe we can talk her into coming and doing that lemon rice soup that she's talked to me about, because <laughs> I don't know how to make it. It's really In fact, easy. I don't know that I've ever eaten it. So I'm looking forward to being her taster. Oh, Yeah, we'll do that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for today. I thank you for your time. Um, We'll see you next time. God bless every one of you. Bye. Thank you.